All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new and very exciting Dominions 5 experience. This is Magnificent Kingdoms, the first game that uh, I am hosting, actually, for uh, the new Dominions 5 patch. So this includes the new nations, and we have both in this game. Magnificent End, the, uh, the namer, uh, is here, as well as Naba, and I am playing Naba. I'm not playing End because I think... I think Ind is a great nation. I think it's quite strong, uh, but it is not for me. It is. The amount of micromanagement involved in playing Ind well is going to be obscene. So I'm playing Nabah, the Elf Giants, instead, because they sound radical. We have a bunch of other, you know, regular nations that we're used to in here as well. So let's hop in and see what we got. So, uh, my god, the 47 Commandments is a rock. He's a battle of the stars, uh, because I decided to play uh, High Bless Naba, which I think is a very, very practical for Naba, given that their sacreds are pretty solid, and they have an excellent sacred thug chassis, plus a bunch of sacred giants that you can, like, fight with if you have to. So, my bless, uh, my bless is Fire Shock Resistance, Regen, and Twist Fate. Twist Fate works really well with Glamoured units because it blocks a hit that otherwise would break the Glamour and thus keeps the Glamour going for longer, which means that you take fewer hits. Um, the other thing that works well with Glamour is uh, I believe you actually have to take damage technically in order for the hit to break the Glamour. So the other thing that works is trying to ratchet your prot up high, so like hard skin or something like that. But eh, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. Uh, and I liked having, I wanted to have the regeneration, I wanted to have uh, the fire shock resistance, because it makes my sacreds, it's going to make my sacreds very, like, weirdly durable against uh, elemental, like fire elementals, because they'll have fire resistance 15, and it will also make them durable against evocation. Now, evocation isn't a huge concern, usually because it's, like, less than ideal in most cases, but still, worth going. Worth, uh, worth fighting against to an extent. So we're gonna name this guy. We're gonna name this guy uh, Giant Moses. And yes, yes, I know I'm doing the I'm doing the Jewish mythology thing with the non-Jewish mythology religion, but that or, or nation, but that's fine. You know, don't even worry about it. Uh, my scales are not great, but should be okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to recruit a Sahir right off the bat. Uh, it's expensive, but a Sahir will give me a good jump on. Uh, sight searching and also it'll give me some you know magic and it's actually a reasonably okay researcher i mean 20 research points plus your magic um 126 gold per year upkeep for 20 research points isn't bad it's expensive up front um mukarib are also quite good researchers albeit your best research is the karib which is only 80 gold sacred for 10 research points this guy is very good at research shame he doesn't do anything else he's stealthy and he has wasteland survival but he's only earth one Holy One, and that's not really useful for you. I'm not going to try to hire Obscuro either, but that's basically going to be my, my first turn. The 47 Commandments here is going to do my research for me. Uh, my random research, because I have ma Magic 3 scales, I took Magic 3, Misfortune 3, I actually only took Growth 2, and that's because uh, the Great Dam increases growth in my capital. So your capital is where... Uh, a large percentage of your population is until the very late game. Having growth three there will mitigate the effects of having lower growth elsewhere. And I needed to squeeze out some points to get my bless. I took turmoil one, sloth one, cold one, which is as far from your your uh, preferred cold scales as you can get as Naba. My income is still high because I still have the vault of incense and marvels, which gives me an extra hundred gold income in this province. But um, it would have been even higher if I had taken actually full good scales. And I think playing Naba as a scales nation is perfectly valid. I just wanted to play it as a, a powerful bless nation first. So we've got the Sahir, we've got these two guys coming up. In terms of research, random research, pretty good. I have Thaumaturgy level 2 already, so I'll be able to get up to my, my site searching uh, and all that pretty quickly. And also, ah yes, Awaken Jin Block, the best national spell. It summons Jin Blocks, they're terrible. They're the worst. Um... Conjuration is where all of my cool summons are, so Contact Jin at Conjuration 4 is an excellent early goal. Jin Warriors at level 5, pretty decent. Kin and Huri at level 6 are also good, although they take a lot of air gems for Huris. Uh, and then at level 8, I have Marids, my kind of endgame super powerful badass summon. Marids are incredibly powerful. They're amazing. Uh, but Alteration is what I want to make thugging with my Jan Emirs viable and I want to do that as quickly as possible so what I'm actually going to do is 
and I'm actually going to research uh, Alteration 4 right off the bat. I think I have the research speed to get that done pretty quickly. Uh, and Alteration will also give me some Earth Combat Magic, like Earth Meld and all that stuff, so I'll be able to fight with mages if I have to. Then, we're going to run down to Conjuration Level 5, uh, and we'll also actually know because we need some Construction. Construction Level 2 and then Conjuration 5. And we'll see where we are at that point. That may that plan may change, but we'll uh, we'll see how we get on. So for pretenders, we have twelve players in this game. We've got the stone that held a sword of middle aged man. We've got Billy Mays of Ulm. We've got Kintu of Kinchi. We've got Bombay Mixmaster McMillian Dollars of Agartha. Oh, have you not heard of Kalem? Beachbone of Pangea. Meme Lord Elf Boy of Vanheim. Sparkles the Bull of Uruk. Green Standard of Facia. The Magnificent God of In the Magnificent Kingdom, the 47 Commandments, and Paz of Is. So uh, it's, this should be just a an absolutely magnificent game. It's going to be all kinds of fun. Uh, we're good to see how good these nations really are in the hands of mediocre players like me. <laughs> um, but like I said, John Amiers, uh, very impressed with these guys. Absolutely going to try thugging the hell out of them just for fun. Jan Guard, with this bless especially, I think Jan Guard are going to be pretty damn good and raiding parties of stealthy jangard are going to be nightmarish uh and of course malikum malika malika are malikat i guess is the plural as I, I i'm not used to that pluralization at all but malikat are very powerful mages and some of them 20 percent of them are air four and 20 percent of them are fire four so those give me access to the fire and air boosters right off the bat some of them are earth two which is fine but not the best some of them are Astral, which lets me communion in the very most powerful air and fire spells very easily. And then some of them are Nature, which is also not the best, but not terrible. Um, and of course, they have the Obfuscate as well. So having some Malikat hanging around is going to be very, very radical. And they have magic power. So in my Dominion, their stats are really, really good. I could actually thug with these ladies if I wanted to, but I don't want to because they cost 480 fucking gold and they're slow to recruit. The last thing I want to try to do with them is Thug. So, that's the game. That's the situation. Uh, in terms of Thrones, we have uh, 12 Thrones for 12 players, and you need to take 7 of them to become the new god. So, it's going to be potentially a little bit longer of a game, I guess. Um, in terms of what I have available, I have 4 Thrones, it looks like, in my kind of vicinity. And to get the others... It looks like the most practical measure is to... If I were to get those four, that's a fifth. It would be to expand this way. Yeah, that one, that one, and that one. Or potentially just make a lunge right across the continent and grab either these three or those three. Those might be closer. So, uh, yeah, basically I need to take the central section of the world and hold it in order to take all seven of these thrones. I don't have any recruitable Holy Threes. In fact, the highest level priest I get is actually the Mukharib, which is priest level 2. But I do have... And I don't think I have any summonable Holy Threes either. Because, like, Marids are actually heretics? They're at least not sacred. Um, And Ifrits and Shaitan also are not sacred. So, um... I can potentially get underwater. I don't have any water magic, but if I can summon a Marid, I can use him to get underwater and summon Bishopfish in the very late game. Um, or I can go up to Construction 8 and forge one of the artifacts that gives you a holy boost and give that one of those to a Mukarib. Because otherwise, this, this joint's Im immobile. Um, I don't think he can... Well, maybe he can teleport. The Battle of the Stars might be able to teleport. If the Battle can teleport, then I'm in business, because he has prop 30 and uh, 150 base hit points and plenty of combat magic. So he could absolutely lay a weapon on somebody if he can teleport. I think he probably can. I think only the Monument. He might be like the Monument. He might not be able to teleport, and I haven't tested that, to be totally honest. So we'll find out. We will find out together. But in any case, that is turn one, and I will see you in turn two of Magnificent Kingdoms. Uh, more, I'm hosting more games, and so they'll be they'll be coming out videos on them as well, probably at least one of them. 
and we'll just uh, we'll have some fun with the new nations. So take care, stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Okay, folks, turn two of Magnificent Kingdoms. This one should be brief. We've got some messages. First, a message from Billy Mays, and I'm sure you're hearing that in the voice. A lot of exciting products don't change that channel. And a message from Ind, the Prester King of Magnificent Ind. I'm not going to shout that, although really you should. Uh, welcomes us to the game. And then we have Prophets. So, Cuthwine the Castellan is the Prophet of the Stone that Held a Sword. Uh, Vince Offer, the Commander of Ulm, is the Prophet of Billy Mays. T and Chi, the general, is the prophet of Kintu. Big news of an ornithological type is the prophet of Oh Have You Not Heard. Uh, Diohippa, the black harpy, is the prophet of Beachbone. Sten Stolpe, the hearse, is the prophet of Meme Lord Elfboy. Whiteheart, defender of peace, is the prophet of Sparkles the Bull. Uh, Brown, the Phaeacian scout, is the prophet of Green Standard. And of course, Giant Moses, the Adite general, is the prophet of the 47 commandments. So, uh, not great provinces around me. I've got Ictiads down south, which are surprisingly threatening, given their nets. I've got barbarians to both of my northern provinces. Nabok can deal with barbarians, but I would like to have uh, basically a full line of John Guard in order to do so, uh, because I need the high defense skill and the glamour in order to avoid taking hits from them. And I'm probably still going to take casualties. Um, then I've got a lot of Wolf Tribe. That may be overstated, but I've seen Wolf Tribe provinces that big before. That's a lot of Wolf Tribe. Uh, and over here, I've got Militia, Archers, and Light Infantry, but it's kind of a shitty province. It clearly has a Death site in it. So I'm going to go over here to Agraria. They do have Longbowmen, but otherwise they mainly have Militia. Shouldn't be too hard to take out. Um, we've got our two Jan Guard backing up our Adite Elite Soldiers. <coughs> excuse me, coughing. And uh, a bunch of Nabian Desert... <coughs> excuse me, a bunch of Nabian Desert Warriors as well. So the 47 Commandments continues to research. We should hit Alteration Level 2 in two more turns. And uh, hopefully by that time we'll have a couple more uh, expansion parties going out. So, that's the long and short of it. I don't think I see anybody yet. Nope, don't really see anybody yet, Boat Eater. We'll take Hamza and head... Oh, I guess I st uh, I didn't notice that I was trapping him. Yikes. Okay, well, that's a wasted turn then. We'll just head him, send him trekking up north, see what we can see. And I'll see you in turn three. Okay, folks, turn three. Um, Tianqi sent me 20 gold, and I believe he also tried to send me a message, but accidentally sent me to the, sent it to the wrong player, so... Ha! Uh, um... In any case, that's uh, relatively irrelevant right now. It's a short turn. Uh, Agartha has declared Agartha World of Pain for ya. Ha! Uh, nice. Uh, if they're profit. And there was a battle in Agraria. It was kind of an unfortunate battle, actually, because... Now, this was a Knights and Longbowmen province, and I knew that. I was kind of hoping that the Knights would charge into my giant infantry and get stuck, uh, but they did not. The knights were on the flank in a, a relatively clever way, so some of the knights got into my Nabean Desert Warriors. Down here, you can see my giant infantry made mincemeat out of the knights they were fighting, but my Nabean Desert Warriors absolutely did not. A whole bunch of units got distracted on them, then the enemy routed, but only after routing all of the Nabean Desert Warriors. So, I lost six of them, and then seven more died during the retreat, leaving me only three. The Elite Soldiers and the Jan Guard did fine, absolutely fine, uh, wiped everybody out, but I don't think this group is strong enough to take on most of the other provinces around me anymore. Um, that province, actually, I can probably take out pretty easily with a few Jan Guard with my Bless. This province I can probably take with... Actually, well, you know what? Giant Moses can probably take either of these provinces, and then it will just depend on what I see beyond him. So, hmm. We have five resources in this province, which isn't even enough to recruit Nabian scouts. That's very sad. Oh, by the way, one of the other things that makes Naba pretty good is the fact that they have uh, Wreck Anywhere scouts. Like, every province, as far as I can tell, can recruit scouts for them. So, yeah, I'll just set him to uh, recruit, I guess. This province does also have Horse Brothers, but of course it has no resources, so it's not really worth anything. Um, 10 Horse Tribe Cavalry are not a threat for these guys. And Giant Moses is pretty tough himself. You know what? But then they get stuck there after only two provinces because they're surrounded by the river, the mountain, and uh, barbarians. I'll tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a gamble. I'm going to send Giant Moses up here to Falgoth because I think with this group, I think he can actually keep going. Adite Elite Soldiers are pretty good at killing Indies. 
And then we're just going to wait here. I'm hi trying to hire Duran's Cavalry. And actually, I'm going to increase my bid. Uh, just in case. I'm going to put it up to 321, which is expensive. It's a lot of money. But Duran's Cavalry is, you know, 10 heavy cavalry. So they can take Indies by themselves pretty effectively. And I'm also, of course, recruiting more John Guard. Um, I could recruit two more Navian Desert Warriors as well. But I'll be honest, they kind of suck. I'll throw them in two more. So next turn, I'll have a Mukharib, who has 40 leadership, and is priest level 2. He'll have 4 Sacreds, plus uh, 5 Nubian Desert Warriors, and 1 Nubian Camel Rider. And so he'll take those guys, and he'll go attack this province. 30 units, but mainly Militia, Archers, and Light Infantry. My Jan Guard should be able to handle those guys very roughly. Uh, and that will get me a few more resources, so that I can start recruiting more of them. Because my main problem right now is just that I'm resource capped. Um, I'm regretting that point of sloth more every minute. Uh, up here, not a whole lot of resources available, and these these provinces are going to be irritatingly tough to take. This province, I, I need numbers to take this one, because Wolf Tribe aren't super dangerous, but they will tend to lap around your flanks and like get at your commanders and stuff when they come in large numbers. So I need more units to take that province. Like, this is not enough. This is not enough. I, I need to be recruiting like four or five Jan Guard turn and send 12 of them to take this province just because that's how many they need in order to stop the blob. Um, safely. But yeah, it should be able to get one province this turn. Uh, research, uh, alteration level two will hit very quickly. As soon as I hit alteration level three, where I can get iron skin, at that point I'll be able to start, uh, probably just using Jan Emir's more or less solo. Because with iron skin, when their natural prot goes up to 20, their total prot is going to be like 20, uh, 27 or 28 or something. That combined with the regeneration on my Bless, as well as the Twist Fate plus their Glamour, that should enable them to take out moderate independent provinces just by themselves. Uh, and that's kind of the goal. That's why I'm rushing down alterations so quick, so I can start using those guys ungeared to take provinces. Now, losing them would be a problem in the sense that I lose commander points. From a sheer resource standpoint, losing a Jan Emir is basically the same thing as just failing expansion. I mean, it costs, because 280 gold, uh, my expansion parties, like this expansion party is, it was uh, 16 Desert Warriors, 2 Jan Guards, 6 Adai Elite Soldiers, so that's 180, and 80 is 260 right there, plus uh, what is this? 8 times 16. Uh, 120 some, 128 gold of Nubian Desert Warriors. So that's more expensive than a Jan Emir. So I don't feel bad about sending Jan Emirs out alone. Yeah, I might lose one or two if I'm not careful about provinces. But the other nice thing is, since they're stealthy, they can actually move through provinces where they don't want to fight and emerge on the other side and kind of pick and choose where they want to go. So hopefully, using those guys plus more conventional armies in sync. I'll be able to secure some pretty solid territory. This river does make me upset. Um, it's actually a good thing that I took cold scales, because I will be able to cross this river during at least most of the year. Not during the summer, but uh, during like... Should be all of winter I should be able to cross that river. Probably also the latter half of fall and maybe early spring as well. I should be able to get across the river. So, that's turn three, and I'll see you all in turn four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Magnificent Kingdom's turn four. I was, I was kind of puzzling over what to do here. Um, I've run into End. We've signed a non-aggression pact, which is fine. I've got this little force of seven units. I kind of want to go in against this wolf tribe, um, just for the sake of continuing my movement. I can't reach any other provinces. It's either wolf tribe or barbarians. So I think I'm going to take the gamble. I think Giant Moses is going to go in against Cloudcap Spires. Meanwhile, down here, Zack, no other name given, is taking four Sacreds and five other random units to take Pack Woods. Hopefully that will go well. I would really, really like to secure some more resources so that I can speed up my Sacred construction, because right now it is kind of painfully slow. And I'm continuing to recruit Mukharib for their research power, which is not much. But in a couple more turns, we will have Alteration Level 3. At that point, I can start using Jan Emir's to expand by themselves, and I am definitely looking forward to that. And I'm the last one on this turn, so we're going to roll right over into turn five. Just hold on to your hats, because this one's very, 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 very short. That's about all that's happening, and I don't really know much about anything else 
like geopolitically speaking. So yeah, it's just very By the way, uh, this was a map that was randomly generated uh, and it decided to slap in a huge ocean. So there's 20 provinces of ocean uh, split among, it, this is worth noting, split among exactly one water nation, which is, uh, well, there's there's Phasia, which can, can sail. There's Is, which is technically the only water nation. But there's also Agartha, which is almost as good in the water as Is is. Now, Agartha is here because that's the only cave. So they actually have a pretty clear shot to the ocean. So they can get in there. Uh, hopefully the ocean will turn into a knockdown drag out brawl between Is and Agartha, but I don't I don't plan on that happening. But in any case, see you in turn five in just a second. You may see a brief flicker. Actually, we're just gonna end the turn here. I'm gonna have to exit. And hopefully the turn will host in a moment. Okay, turn five of Magnificent Kingdoms. Uh, I did take both of my target provinces. Unfortunately, in Cloudcap Spires, I did suffer a little bit of loss. Uh, I lost it one Jangard and one of my Adite Elite Soldiers. So this force is now uncomfortably small and weak. And there's no real good targets surrounding it anymore. However, I did take Pack Woods with zero casualties. So that's nice. Um, and if we look... A couple of afflictions, but no diseases, so good. I'm going to get these guys out of there right away. And I think what I'm going to do is, I think I may actually hit those bar- I- mm, I'm worried about attacking those barbarians is the thing. Um, Here, I mean, this was like practically nothing. So we just walked over that, no trouble. But there's- The geography around here is so cramped. There's almost nowhere to go. Uh, and it's really kind of a problem. Like, I'll be real. It's it's a uh, cramp in my style. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There's a throne right up there, and a throne right up there, and a throne over there. But that's in the water, so that doesn't matter. This river is a pain in my whole entire ass. Uh, I do have Hashim over here, who can head south to show me what's what. A knight province. I don't think this this gang can take a knight province. Uh, if there's more than like one knight there, it, it, it's a loss. They're absolutely doomed. So I think, but what I could do potentially is... Chaff it up a little bit with these uh, some wolf tribe warriors. Send them in first to absorb the lance charges. If I do that, I might be able to take it. Um, over here... We've got some more resources now, so now we can recruit uh, three, almost four John Guard per turn. That's good news. So next turn, I'll be able to send out another expedition. And Yazil Bain here is going to start moving out to site search. Zach, meanwhile, I, I I think I just have to come back. I I don't think because I can't. I don't think I can take all those barbarians. So what I need to do is I need to bring Zach back in. He can pick up the new troops to reinforce the troops that he currently has. And then with that force, he'll be able to break through the Silver Wall and clean up some of these provinces down here. Um, and that'll be fine. This guy, Giant Moses here, needs to wait one turn and then try for Endless Plain. My expansion is going slowly, just mainly due to the geography and the lack of an expander god. But you know what? That just is what it is. When you're surrounded by all these barbarian provinces... It, it, there's just nothing to be done about it sometimes. A couple of these problems, these provinces are actually not bad too in terms of income. I would love to have them. I just don't have the the stuff for it right now. Possibly next turn. Um, possibly next turn things will get cold, and if they do, then I might send Zach into. I might actually gang up on Karion here, and take that, and then roll through these provinces. But we'll just kind of see how things develop. Uh, like I said, two more turns to Alteration Level 3, when I can start sending out the John Emirs. And I actually have plenty of gold, so what I think I'm going to do here while I'm waiting is... I'm going to recruit a scout. Oh no, that would take away two of my, uh... Take away two of my dudes, wouldn't it? Mm hmm Because I'd like to build a fort here, to be honest. Not a bad place for a fort. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. 
we're going to start building a giant palisade. Uh, a fort in Agraria I don't really need, because with the resources being so low, I'll never be able to recruit anything there anyway. Uh, and the recruitment points are... Well, the recruitment points are pretty decent. It would take, and it wouldn't take many resources away from Naba because it doesn't hardly have any. Uh, actually, that's a decent idea. So instead, why don't you just preach for a moment? Fill that, get those, and you, instead of sneaking away, build the giant palisades. There we go. Okay, so starting my first fort on turn five, not too shabby. Uh, unfortunately, my income isn't going to go up this coming turn, but it should go up afterwards. Any good mercenaries? No. Ulrich is spending the world and all of money on mercenaries. It's really impressive, to be honest, but uh, I'm not too, too worried about it. It would be nice to get archers. Archers are good at Wolf Tribe. I'll, I'll just bid my remaining money on Arnod's archers. And that will be the turn, so I will see you all in turn six. Actually, you know what? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that. Because I'm going to bid on them up here. If I can get Arnod's archers up in that province, then I'll be absolutely good to go. So, that'll be it. I'll see y'all in turn six.